Those two right there are the ones that are, are just, it just hurts so bad to see these two because look how old and big they are. We probably lost 40 trees right here on our 10 acres. Every week, every other weekend, we'd see another tree that was beginning to die. And I mean, it's just so sad. We just cry. And to think that that might have something to do with it, along with their other explanations, would really, really frost me. Every time you lose a tree, you know, it's, it's not good. It's just sad. And there's another one over here in this little group of trees here. Don't you feel better when you stand up and fight than if you crawl down in a little hole and go to sleep? You know, I mean, my gosh, people, there are, your families are out there, children are out there, your grandchildren. I mean, you've got to do something to help. My greatest hope is to get people to question and hey if they don't wake up while we're there I'm hoping to plant some seeds we're going to the most beautiful place on the planet Hawaii plant some seeds we're going to the most beautiful place on the planet Hawaii to, to see what's going on collect some data Thank you for having fun with us. Hope you enjoyed the trip. Have a great vacation and welcome home if you're lucky enough to live here. Thank you. The whole valley is off the grid, so it's either solar, wind, or um, generators. Look at this, man. Yeah, the mind can't even conceive of it. Being <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Even even coming here, and and one would never think, you know, in in paradise that that it's getting destroyed. And they're doing it island style. They do it off the island, right? They do it off the island. So they don't, you know, you don't see the chemtrail airplane. The theory is that they're spraying the ocean, yeah. offshore, and it's, it's coming in on the and it's coming in. Now these are coming from the west. They're also spraying on both sides today. A lot of this stuff is actually chemtrails coming this direction. There's material that's blocking. We should be able to see to the horizon, you know, where the Earth curves because we're high enough and we have the ocean, right? So we should be able to see. We should be able to see the Big Island. It's only 30 miles away. And you can see it's not a blue sky behind it. That's the key. It's all, it's all you know, has that kind of weird looking blue, like silver blue, I call it. And this is a nice day. You know, there's no more blue sky. The night, we're going to look at the stars at night. It's like, there's, you'll see, you can count them. There's so few stars at night now. There should be hundreds of thousands of stars, and I can count the stars. There's like one here and one here and one planet here. It's like, you might see, some nights you'll see a hundred, some nights you'll see ten. This is what concerns me, this kind of stuff right here. It's just soft. Okay. This just comes right off, this bark. That's not natural. Well, I've seen hundreds of thousands of coconuts and I've never seen it falling apart like that. Look, look at this, you guys. I've never seen anything like this. They used to trim trees all the time in the Big Island. I've never seen anything like that. That's why I'm concerned. Not an easy task that you have here on the island. I could see the skepticism because it is so far beyond anybody's reality. It's amazing. It's just amazing to not to try to look through somebody else's eyes. Like my eyes, I, I can see this so it's like night and day. And other people, it's just, it's just the, 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 the illusion is just so deep. What do you think would happen if everybody awakened to, uh, to what was going on and what the plans were of geoengineers? I think, <laughs> I think they'd have a revolution in Hawaii. If people really understood what was going on. What's your concern for, I know that, that you love the land here. 
What do you, what's your concern How about the chemtrails? Well, that, that we won't be able to live here and grow our own food, and that our health is going to be compromised. Do you uh, think it already has been? Yes. And the, the thing is that they're doing it every day here, every day. So it's hammering, 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 micro doses every day. And then, of course, it's getting in the environment, and of course, it's weakening the plants. And it takes a couple years for this to actually weaken the plant. So we need, we are asking for GMO taro. We're asking for GMO papaya because we can't grow our natural seeds. We can't be sustainable. We can't truly, you know, be here as God created us to be. And so my friend convinced me to do a hair analysis on my daughter. So we went ahead and cut close to her scalp and got some really recent, recently grown hair and sent it in. I was just sure that my daughter's hair was going to be so clean with the lifestyle that we live. And lo and behold, it came back and her levels were really high in aluminum. This is the chart here. Um, this is the reference range and this is where my daughter is. 23.1. Aluminum, the skies are covered with a white mist, and I look up at night anymore and I don't see the deep, dense stars that I used to, and I can't help but think this obviously has something to do with my daughter's health. I don't know where else these heavy metals are coming from. Yeah, I mean, look, look how old she is. Yeah. She's been isolated here. Here, and she's... Uh, uh, here. Anybody looking at the situation would be like, this is paradise. This child should be like super human. organic foam, and here you are getting all this heavy metal stuff. And she, has, you, she has highest level aluminum on the chart. Never had a vaccine either. Folks, these people are playing God. They are playing God. They're manipulating the weather and they're spraying stuff into the sky. They are trying to geoengineer everything, including your plants and trees and your ocean. Well, tonight, we're just hoping that instead of not looking at it, you start looking into it because I really believe from the bottom of my heart that we are in a real crisis. I really do. They are proposing dumping 10 to 20 million tons of aluminum into the upper atmosphere. What does aluminum do? It changes the pH of soils, which is toxic to plant life. Also, it's very toxic to human health. Are they doing it? Well, let me tell you about my experience and what we found. We have much evidence that not only suggests, but I believe prove that they are happening. And as I promised, we're joined right now by a very special guest, Michael J. Murphy, currently on location uh, in Hawaii. He's working on a documentary film called What in the World? Are they spraying? Michael, welcome to the program. Great to speak with you today. I had a friend who recently, he, he's, he's, uh, he's always looking at, at, at things from a different perspective. He's a bit, he's a bit of um, uh, a conspiracy theorist, you know. And he says that whenever the president comes to L.A., there's no spraying that week. Could you have a better place for an interview? I mean, look. <laughs> this is being done mm -hmm. over our over our farms and over our things. So basically, they want to eliminate our ability to eat organic food, clean food, have clean water. So it, in some ways, it, it sounds to me like, and you know, again, it's just a projection, but it sounds to me like this is control. How do we control the masses? Yeah. Uh, how can aluminum be good for you in any? And what was the second chemical any, you mentioned? It's, uh, it's barium. Barium aluminum. Obviously, those are toxic to, to, to everything. To human health. To yeah. human health, to, to farms, to animals, to everything. 61,000 parts per billion. And th there should be a government alert at 1,000? At, at 1,000, people are drinking this. People that climb the mountain, they're drinking that snow. It's poison. That's so disgusting. So that's that's 60,000 times above regulation. Exactly. 60,000 times above regulation. And I've, I've talked to friends and they're like, well, that's just ice. That's mm -hmm. just condensation. I, 
And I'm like, you can talk to a second grader. Ice doesn't float in the sky and spread out that way, you know? You're not an expert, but you're a concerned citizen who said, wait a second. He's actually doing I wanna, the research. I, yeah, you're doing the research, and that's what we need to do as Americans and say, you know what? I want to know what's going on. I want to know what the FDA is doing to my food. I want to know what the government's doing with my air and my water and, and, and the soil. And, you know, it's just great what you're doing. And, and, and I, I just, my kudos to you for, for bringing light to this subject. Put all of the theories aside, just what geoengineers are proposing and what's being found is scary enough. So we can just address that. And I encourage, you know, I encourage more people to just step up and ask questions and, and do what he's doing. So thank you, Michael, very, very much. Uh, aerosol spraying aluminum uh, affects everywhere. And we have a beautiful tropical climate, which I believe might be in jeopardy. So we wanted to not only come and, and bring the message of what people were finding around the world, but encourage people to test for the aluminum strontium barium. Essentially, I think it was an effective trip. I saw a lot of people here in Hawaii, in Maui, awake and not only curious, but willing to look into this deeper. And that's my only hope. And this is one of the boldest moves, I think, from Ed Griffin yet. Uh, this is the taboo topic that nobody's supposed to talk about, and that is aerosol spraying. Now, we've got uh, tons of documented proof of errant aerosol spraying. It, it just blows my mind that, that the whole essence of humanity has always been to look up into the sky and ask why. Though there are no limitations, there's endless space, an endless universe. Now, in the 21st century, we're not allowed to do that. Anyone who looks up and sees the giant grids and the X's in the sky that, that weren't part of our existence until just a, a decade or two ago is somehow called a kook. And the people that are the best and biggest proponents for the revolution and for liberty, they don't want you to talk about it because you could discredit them. It, it seems to be an industry that's being built up to uh, to milk the taxpayers by undergoing some kind of a giant a spraying global spraying program to make all kinds of money on the project and they don't seem to care really what effect it has they're not trying to experiment to see if humans can survive it or anything like that they just want to get this stuff up and then we discover as we're going further down the line that there are companies generating a uh, genetically modified organisms or seeds, uh, modified seed crops that are they're being engineered to resist the aluminum in the soil. And a lot of crops won't grow in that and so now after they've messed up the soil all the farmers were going to have to go back and uh, buy seeds that have been yeah. genetically engineered to resist the aluminum that have been put into the soil and all of a sudden uh, mankind is completely dependent upon these uh, companies like Monsanto and other giant uh, agricultural firms. You can't even grow natural seeds anymore. And we're looking at that. It, it's, a, it's a shocking thing. I hope, I hope we don't find that that's true. But all the arrows right now are pointing in that direction. We get into cost-benefit analysis here because there's also HARP could be involved in this. Geoengineering, as you guys mentioned, which is documented heavily in Dennis Kucinich's uh, bill that is the Space Preservation Act, uh, which, by the way, I don't think got through Congress, and then Cade Bailout, as we call her here, Cade Bailey Hutchinson, uh, also put together some legislation in order to qualify geoengineering, which, again, is supposed to save us all from global warming. But it is cost-benefit analysis because they can benefit on so many different levels, Ed. That's how yeah. they do everything, isn't that's it? That's right. And, you know, there's an old adage, if you just follow the dollar, follow the buck, you usually you get to the source of the problem. And it looks to me like there's a tremendous, uh, tremendously profitable industry uh, being built up right now uh, around this concept of geoengineering or weather modification or reducing global warming and all of these other things that can be sold fairly easily to an unsuspecting public. They all say, oh, well, that's good. We, we don't want global warming, you know. And so they put up with this and they don't question, they don't criticize. But behind the scenes, you see a whole industry being built up, which is, uh, as I say, tremendously profitable. And the the money for all of that is coming uh, from the taxpayers. And uh, it, it's a scam is basically what it is. We're just focusing on the one area that is real easy to prove. There's no speculation in the, in the area that we're going into. They definitely are 
uh, doing this geoengineering. They definitely are talking about it. They've, they're working up formulas for it. They're putting together strategies for it. They've got funding for it. Everything is in place. We don't even have to go into those other areas to make the case. Um, okay, let them, let them believe that, but at least